開竅，等佢啊點一點之後咧，佢嘅智慧咧，第時咧就會誒大開啦咁樣。老師咧就會教佢哋讀幾句《三字經》。啊，對啊，兄弟。人之初，性本善，性相近，習相遠，教不教，性難似。老師咧會教佢開筆。用支毛筆啊，點啲墨教佢寫，所以寫呢，都係寫上大人孔乙己化三千七十事。Since the 1997 handover, the Chinese identity has slowly taken root among Hong Kong people. The government is correcting its favoritism towards English in its language policy during the colonial period. Chinese education is promoted on all fronts. In fact, as early as a century ago, Chinese education has been advocated by non-governmental groups. Hong Kong, with its unique geographical and political status, became one of the most important bases for preserving the Chinese culture and literature. This is Bonham Road. 85 years ago, there stood a three-story building there. A common goal united the people inside the building, to promote and to pass on Chinese traditional culture. For them, it is a personal experience. We hope that because of this, Hong Kong people can know more about Chinese culture and culture. Hock Hoi Library was started in 1923 by a group of imperial scholars from the then Qing dynasty. They promoted Chinese traditional culture through organizing classes and lectures. Lai Tiang Chang was only a toddler when his father, Lai Chi Si, founded the library. I remember Lai Chi Si was a Qing court scholar. He moved to Hong Kong soon after the nationalist government was established. The success of the 1911 revolution marked the end of the Qing dynasty and the beginning of the nationalist government. A number of Qing dynasty's court scholars sought refuge in Hong Kong at that time. 前清嘅遺老，翰林學士，有學問，有中國傳統文化嘅認識啊！咁佢哋咧對國內佢已經冇乜地位啦啊！咁佢誒個個咧自嚟到香港依個避難所啊，喺依度過生活。These scholars saw Hong Kong as no more than a temporary refuge. Their hearts were still in the lost dynasty. In their correspondences, old era name and former official titles were still used. I remember they were 就嚟扣個頭啊！啲咁嘅仍然有些少咁嘅懷念，希望有個復闢嘅。The story of Song Wang Toi, a relic associated with the fall of the last Song emperors, apparently struck a chord with those displaced officials. In 1916, Lai Chi Si rallied a number of local businessmen and petitioned the government for keeping Song Wang Toi. 
the site later became a gathering spot for the defunct officials in Hong Kong. 雖然呢班朋友咧係感懷身世，話感到自己好孤苦伶仃，甚至又感到自己咧就係好誒誒誒好悲傷啦、好哀傷啦咁嘅情況。咁但係咧，其實呢班朋友咧對香港咧非常之重要嘅貢獻就係話發揚咗咪保存咗中國文化。The May Fourth Movement in 1919 triggered a new cultural wave that swept through China. Yet Hong Kong somehow remained relatively unaffected, with the public still in favour of traditional Confucian values. Sensing this, Lai Chi Si had high hopes for Hong Kong. Lai had once said how much he would like to see Chinese traditional culture spreading in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a beautiful place. The Chinese people are the Chinese people. The Chinese people are the Chinese people. 出生嘅地方喺老國，都係咧山東嘅，即係代即係所以周老咧，即係代表中國傳統嘅文化。中國傳統文化，即使喺濱海嘅地方咧，都已經係有發展起嚟咁嘅意思嘅啫。In nineteen twenty three, Hock Hoi Library was an important venue for the studies of Chinese culture. Eminent court scholars of the then Qing dynasty taught here. Way to lie, hai. Tian yuan zhang mu, wu bu wei. Ji zhi yi sheng wei ying yi. Ah, 咁嘅念法，真系句句咧有对比有铿锵，由呢啲老师念出嚟，直接好过听唱歌。Wan Hing Yun was 17 when he first sat in a lecture at Hock Hoi Library. To Wan, these were invaluable chances to learn from eminent scholars. These piles of papers have weathered well after almost half a century. As Wang Hing Yun reads through the notes, he reminisces about his scholar's teachings. Disseminating knowledge through books and people was Hock Hoi Library's mission. This handwritten draft by Lai Ji Si was a blueprint for the campus building. The library was designed to be a public one, where everyone could borrow books freely. It was taken as the first public library in Hong Kong. The Hock Hoi collection consists of over 30,000 volumes. In 1962, Hock Hoi Library was to be demolished. The City Hall Public Library prepared to house Hock Hoi's invaluable collection. Nguyen Tak was among the first staff to dig into the treasure trove. When I saw this book, it was a kind of fire. I personally think that this book, the book of the book, is the book of the book, 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 佢哋而家咧已經係二百幾年，係非常之珍貴，又能夠喺幾百年之後留翻出嚟喺香港呢個命運當中嘅一呢個國寶級嘅一個一套書。呢批書咧係一個活寶貝嚟嘅，佢係一個凝聚整個中國文化嘅角髓。喺現在香港中央圖書館嚟講，呢一批書以我睇咧係一個。
we see great historical value in the collection, which itself is a repository of a lot of Chinese classics that waits for further research. The colonial government used to take a laissez-faire attitude towards Chinese language education, which therefore was promoted by non-governmental institutes instead. A massive strike broke out in 1925. The animosity among the public against the British rule reached a boiling point. It was the time when Sir Cecil Clementi was appointed as the new governor of Hong Kong. One of his accomplishments was the establishment of the School of Chinese Studies in the University of Hong Kong, which he wrote in this letter would be beneficial not only to the university, but also to the entire city as well. But the colonial government considered traditional Chinese education as a stabilizing factor for the society. Under Clementi's charge, Chinese studies at the tertiary level became a reality. The School of Chinese Studies Hong Kong U was officially founded in 1927. The court scholars at Hock Hoi Library joined as the inaugural staff of the school. Lai Ji Si was appointed by Clementi as the head of the school. In the colonial style campus, two new buildings were built after the School of Chinese Studies was founded. The provision of Chinese studies in higher education in Hong Kong had started. Lai designed the curriculum and stated that the goal of the school was to assimilate both traditional culture and new knowledge. Lai solicited donations from local businessmen as well as Chinese merchants living in Southeast Asia. Feng Ping Shan was one of the tycoons in Hong Kong. He was so concerned about the development of Chinese studies that he sponsored the construction of an entire teaching building. Today, Feng Ping Shan Building, a granite and red brick structure not far away from Lock Yu Hall, has been declared as an historical monument. At present, it is being used as the university's museum. It was originally a library of Chinese books, the first among local tertiary institutions. It was a big event when the library first opened its doors. The opening day of the library was December 14, 1932, but Feng died before that day. His son, Feng Pinghua, told of his father's wish for the development of Chinese studies. To Feng Ping Shan, promoting Chinese studies was necessary in order to preserve Chinese culture. Another teaching building was also made possible by private donation and in this case by Tang Ching Long. The three-story building was completed in 1931. Today, Tang Ching Ong Building still houses alumni rosters from the early years.
There were not too many students enrolled in Chinese studies at the beginning. 修讀嘅人數咧雖然唔係咁多，咁但係對日後嘅香港嘅中國語文教育啦、中國文化教育咧影響非常之大。特別係中國傳統學問嘅經史紙集得以從中國內地咧傳播香港。According to the curriculum prescribed by Lai, the School of Chinese Studies put an emphasis on the study of Chinese classics, that is, the orthodox education. At a time when the New Culture Movement was in its 10th anniversary in the mainland, Hong Kong had been a target of criticism by mainland intellectuals. In 1935, the University of Hong Kong conferred an honorary degree of Doctor of Laws to Hu Shi, a leading exponent of the New Culture Movement. In one of his speeches, he criticized the School of Chinese Studies for being too conservative. Hong Kong in fact, the university was looking for someone who had the academic expertise in Chinese studies and would preferably also know English well. He should possess management skills and be able to speak Cantonese too. Finally, they found one, Xu Ti Shan. Xu Ti Shan, the author of the well-known prose Peanuts, was a sinologist. He obtained his master's degree from the University of Oxford. His appointment brought a number of changes to the curriculum. Xu Ti Shan came to Hong Kong University. He was able to preserve Chinese traditional culture. 佢仲喺課程上啊，增加咗中國現代文學同埋史學同埋哲學等等嘅科目落去，咁啊令到咧呢個中文學系啊就更加充實，更加走向現代化呢個道路。Lai Tiangchang, the son of the inaugural head, was a student at the School of Chinese Studies. Xu was one of his teachers. 個潛意識係一種對立性嘅，最少我先付退休咧，咁係唔係佢自己會覺得誒，好似有啲新派入嚟咧就擁走佢咁，可能有咁嘅感覺都唔定嘅。但係我話啲話係唔係啦，我我相信都會有咁嘅感覺。Xu Tishan devoted himself to reforming Hong Kong's education system. He went to different places to deliver speeches. 喺土地山就民間啦，非常之積極推動本港嘅中國語文、中國文化教育走向現代化啦，普及化發展嘅方向。一個時間，孫行已經講唔係講座噶啦，咁其實係將好多中國語文嘅知識啦、中國文化嘅知識啦，係普及於民間。This is Xu's working schedule. Within only a few years, he conducted more than a hundred educational events. In 1941, after a brief six-year tenure, Xu died unexpectedly of heart disease when he was only 46. The passing of Xu was a shock to the academia. Obituaries were abundant in praise of Xu's contribution to the city's Chinese education. From Qing scholars to Professor Xu Tishan, Chinese studies has come a long way in Hong Kong and managed to thrive despite all odds. How could a small coastal city at the fringe of a wide-spanning nation be able to pass on the nation's culture? Hong Kong is a center of the world and the world. The whole of what I'm saying is a small island. It's not a small island, because it's because it's a center of the world and the world. On the one hand, it's a center of the world and the world. On the other hand, it's a center of the world and the world. On the other hand, it's a center of the world and the world. So it's a center of the world and the world. It's a center of the world and the world. It's a center of the world and the world. It's a center of the world and the world. 但係私人為咗將啲平凡嘅句子變成警句咧，可以用呢種手法。Hock Hoi Library, founded by a group of Qing Court scholars, is still holding classes on Chinese culture today. 
even though the original venue at Bonham Road was demolished in 1963, Hog Hoy has made an agreement with the City Hall which would provide venues for their lectures. Now there are four weekly sessions held in the public libraries. Among those sitting in the classroom are regulars for over 10 years. Hong Thank you.